morning this is josh mass gun works again um every now and again i get some neat firearms coming into the shop uh, they have some history behind them um i have sorry had a hair in my mouth i had some of these that come in that i i frankly don't know anything about and i've got to i gotta figure it out <laughs> so this is one um this is a rifle that was brought to me by uh, my uncle. Uh, he runs a machine shop in Peru, lived there all his life. And believe it or not, he found this in a junkyard behind, um, I don't know if the Kmart is still open or not, but it, it where the Kmart sits, there used to be a, a junkyard there. And the way he tells the story, there's this old gentleman named Junkie Johnson. And he ran a junkyard, and he used to let my uncle go in there and just pick through stuff and take home whatever he found. And he found this rifle. So this is a single shot. Still functions. Okay. And this is how the receiver mechanism works. So this little brass screw right here, you lift it up, and the action lever's open, and the... Uh, extractor, ejector, toggles forward, and then when you close it, it goes back down. Now you have to have it in the cocked position to open it, okay? I can't open it. So I pull it all the way back, half cock, there we go. And the firing pin is built into this block here, okay? It's not spring-loaded, it's just gravity. So there's full cock released. So you note the funky shape of the trigger guard. That's gonna be important later. But <clears throat> based on what I have been able to see of this particular gun, <clears throat> my belief is that it was chambered in 32 rimfire. I got my calipers here and I'm going to double check the bore, okay? Because as much as I want to believe this is a 22, it's a little big for a 22. <laughs> so um, the bore on this is 300 thou. So I'm going to say a 32 rimfire is probably proper cartridge for this. Uh, <clears throat> here is the a copy of the original sales advertisement. Okay, I'm gonna get in kind of close here. And if you notice, <laughs> this one here has that same trigger guard. So does this one. Go down. This is a 32 right here. This is a 22 and a 22 short. I think the top was 22 short. Okay, so my I'm just gonna do a little bit of CSI in here. My assumption based on what I'm seeing is somebody may have taken this trigger guard, put it on this gun after this was purchased or this barrel, it was a 22, and the barrel is just so corroded and shot out that it expanded, you know, 80 thousandths of an inch. Not very likely, uh, because as I open this, and I sight down the bore, there's no obstructions. I can still see some rifling. Um, the barrel's not in like tip-top amazing shape, but the weapon's still serviceable and fireable, okay? Probably not going to be the most accurate thing you ever shot, but you can still shoot it. Um, this rifle sold for $2.80. Uh, let's see. It says it is a Warrant or Springfield Action. Polished medium heavy octagon barrel, uh, pistol grip, fancy butt, 
trigger guard, checkered stock, uh, dark mounting, 22 inch barrel, and then it says what caliber it uses. So, cash order price is two dollars and sixty cents. Um, there was another sub model that was the same as above, but with a heavier 24 inch barrel. Um, it's advertised as the safest rifle for boys. <laughs> Shoots cartridge number 6P2336 or 6P2338. Weighs about six pounds. Cash order price is two dollars seventy-five cents. Okay, there's some neat history here. So I'm not real sure how old uh, this catalog page is, but there's there's all kinds of stuff. They got a picture of the Quackenbush. Uh, they call the bicycle rifle. Uh, it's a 22. Bunch of neat stuff here. So anyway. Just want to share that with you guys. If you have any questions, comments, you know, you know where to leave them. Uh, you can contact me at massgunworks at gmail.com if you want to email me. Um, if you've got any insight into this gun, if your grandpa owned one, let me know. Let me know what you know. So, hope this was entertaining. Give me a like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you later.